Joe, I don't know where this plugs into. So what's the difference between a standard hybrid and a plug-in hybrid? Well, as the name suggests, in a plug-in hybrid, you plug it in to charge the batteries because they're much larger. For instance, in this Hyundai Ioniq, the batteries on the plug-in hybrid are 8.9 kilowatt hour lithium ion polymer batteries, whereas in a standard hybrid, they're only 1.56 kilowatt hours. That should give this a range, according to Hyundai, of around about 40 miles on electric power only. And of course, like in the standard hybrid, the car itself, the computer in the car, will select what's more efficient for it. So whether it goes from standard battery and electric motor to engine to engine combined with electric motor. So, for instance, acceleration or travelling uphill will activate both the engine and the electric motor combined to give you the power required. Also, high-speed cruising, such as motorway driving or open air roads, will have both working in tandem or it will actively select either the engine or electric motor in order to utilise less fuel and provide better efficiency. At low speed, however, say slow urban driving and through town, the car will be powered purely by the battery, with the engine only coming into play when the charge level is either low or more speed is required, such as you accelerate through the national speed limit signs. The car will also put a small amount of charge back into the battery when the driver uses the brakes. Now this takes kinetic energy from the brakes to feed a charge back into the battery. Now if you're a fan of Formula 1, then this will be familiar to you and is known as the KERS, Kinetic Energy Recovery System. In these cars, it's known as brake regeneration, and it can sometimes be adjusted depending on the car. So, driving a plug-in hybrid doesn't really differ too much from that of a standard hybrid, other than the ability for the vehicle to cover a greater electric-only range. It still uses both a conventional internal combustion engine in tandem with an electric motor. So as I've said, because of the bigger battery pack in the car, you are going to have to charge it from an external source. Like something like a charger that you're going to find at the local petrol station now. This is a Type 2 charger. This, you will also need an app on your telephone. Of course, you can charge them from a 3 pin domestic socket, although Hyundai is one of the manufacturers to say to do this for emergency only. So, most of the time, it's going to be from a Type 2 charger like this. However, bear in mind, even to cover the 39 mile charge, you're probably going to be here for a good couple of hours. In which case, you're going to need some good reading material while you wait. Well, that depends on the car itself. In this Ionic, for instance, the car selects between petrol engine, hybrid mode and electric vehicle only, depending on circumstances, all on its own. However, the driver can select via this button down here between hybrid and electric mode, for instance if you're in urban areas. What this car won't do however is hold on to its battery charge. So we're down in Sussex at the moment on a full battery driving to London. The car will use that battery on the way up. We couldn't hold it until we got to London itself and then just use pure EV through, although some cars will. Most of them also come with an automatic gearbox, in this case it's a 6 speed dual clutch system. Um, very very familiar to people um, these days, ostensibly transmission of choice. Pure EV cars however won't have, they will have a single speed transmission. What also is different is they will come with some form of regenerative braking, like we, cover, like we cover in the electric vehicle one. That does take a bit of getting used to, although again, like some cars, the Hyundai allows you to select the level of aggressiveness that that comes with. Well, that depends on your use of a car. If you're using it just for short commuting with the occasional long journey thrown in, then yes, it does because it gives you all the benefits of an electric car but with the comfort of having the petrol engine for those long journeys as a backup. Just bear in mind however that the purchase price is usually a lot higher in the first instance 
and plug-in hybrids no longer attract the UK government grant, the electric vehicles do. We will cover that, however, in our next episode all about the electric vehicles. Remember, if you like what we're doing, please like the videos, subscribe and set up your phones to receive those notifications so you're aware of when the next episode's out. Thank you for watching and stay connected.